CLMV looks like it lost a little bit of that bull strength towards the end of the session. Let's go ahead and find out what could be happening with CLNV. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again on this uh, hump day, Wednesday. This is Arca coming at you with a CLNV technicals, raw price action, and statistical threat of analysis. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community in Discord called Arcab. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the charts. Okay, so we're going to start off uh, the analysis with the stats, okay? But I'm also going to present a uh, kind of a vision from my uh, from my discretionary side that I would have to, that I would like to share with you. And I still, uh, would like to continue talking about it because it may be, uh, it may be approaching or it may be pertinent to the current price action. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and start off with the stats. First of all, we did take, uh, we did take a back test of volatility versus momentum. Okay. So volatility is direction neutral. So we need the momentum oscillator to give us the bias for direction. Right. So please know that we are on the three day chart here. So it does take some time for these, uh, uh, indicators to start to pivot towards the upside or downside based on the closure of these, uh, three day candle iterations. Okay. As you can see, the candle that we're presently on is still ha it still has 21 hours and 15 minutes minutes to complete. Okay, so upon that closure, then we'll go ahead and see what could be happening uh, within the stochastics momentum. Okay, so this is moving at a very snail pace. All right, so um, particular to the back test of volatility versus momentum, anytime that we have approached or landed within the critical volatility zone, which is uh, within the 90 percentile and started a contraction phase towards the downside on volatility speaking, of course, uh, I have taken I have taken note of every iteration where that has happened, and uh, I've actually taken the note of the duration of the iteration, the upside thrust of that iteration, and the amount of times that volatility versus momentum gets the upside uh, correctly versus incorrectly. Okay, so out of a ten total iterations throughout the entire trading history of CLMV on the three day chart, seven of those iterations were guessed correctly to the upside, giving us an average upside accuracy of 70% with an average upside thrust of a huge percentage of 4,300% over the span of about 84 days. Okay, so with that said, the firing of the signal already happened. Okay, it happened... Uh, it happened on, let's see, December 20th, and, and the price action has moved about 120% to the upside based on the firing of volatility versus momentum. Okay, so please remember that we are talking about uh, an average duration of 84 days, okay? So <laughs> so the, it would uh, naturally take some time for this to realize, okay? But whatever is happening within the, within the data, it does notice that there is some strength coming in for the asset somehow, some way, I don't know, okay? But that's just what the data is saying, okay? Another thing to notice is, or to keep in mind, uh, is that this is absolutely a, a statistical variable or a statistical mean, okay? This data set is absolutely not a certainty, okay? Please remember that as we move along uh, uh, to the next uh, analysis, okay? So now I want to present to you my the continuation of my discretionary side, okay? So I have, I have left here uh, these uh, formations because I feel that they are very important, okay? So first of all, that was the pennant that you looked at, and the other one that I have also been talking about is the rising wedge, okay? So please remember that the rising wedge is absolutely a bearish formation, and I have been talking about this, uh, you know, throughout the video sporadically, okay? But uh, yesterday we mentioned that the possibility of the breakout from the pennant would be likely, and as you can see, the candle iteration from today uh, has actually come back to test our two spot 618. And that's really where we were looking for our support. Okay, we have found that bounce and have moved to the upside, but I must warn, I must warn that I need you to pay. Okay, particularly this. Okay, this is my this is my discretionary side taking over. Look at the size of the candles. Okay, I'm talking about wick to, to I mean wick high to the wick low. They're pretty large, right? So and then look at the candles start to get smaller and smaller as we reach the top. That is because we're riding a rising wedge. Okay, so usually these rising wedges per uh, um, <clears throat> they kind of give out uh, a bearish outlook. Okay, so these bearish these bearish formations do end up playing uh, playing out to the downside, and they usually end up 
uh, realizing that true nature when we reach the 70 to 75 percent to the apex i mean arguably here we're just at about the almost 70 percent so this would start to gain some risk uh little by little okay but now please know that there are that there are a few areas of support below us in the event to where we do fall okay so first of all we do have the well, i'm going to just note them right here for future purposes okay we're going to note the one spot 618 at uh oh let's see at 0511 so five cents okay <clears throat> and uh <coughs> wow pardon me okay and we also do have this uh the penance uh lower uh lower end okay so in in that case then we would actually start to ride the pennant the way it should be riding okay so this is a buy formation that we're looking at and there are two ways of riding it so upon the realization of this which is very much pertinent to the resistance that we're facing currently at that pennant which is the larger triangle we are rejecting from that resistance meaning that this can potentially start to fail soonish and then we could actually make our downside trek eventually leading uh, to between the one spot uh, 618 and the and the one spot 272 at about 0444 okay so this is just uh, I'm just giving you the the range because this is typically how how this uh, formation is traded okay it's it's just a, a playbook rule okay it doesn't mean that it's going to happen I'm just saying that this is a typical way to trade it so I'm going to just go ahead and draw this uh, what is happening okay Oh, right. We need this one here. Sorry about that. So let's just go ahead and uh, mark off the section from the one spot 618 to the two spot 272 um, and make sure that we have that jotted down because this is likely an area for us to find as support. Maybe just even a little wick right below it to actually touch the support level of the of the. Uh, the pennant itself if it is so that we are going to build it so we actually do need two touch points of the support in order for us to validate that we're within the pennant itself okay so now we have already achieved the resistance touches we have the one two and three okay and four now so that's good so but we only have one for the lower end of the of the formation okay we still need another to validate that we are within it okay but below below these supports just definitely know that we have uh th that we have the not 786 to the not 618 which are located at 349 to about 314 just absolutely know that we still have several areas that are that are of confluent uh, support but before we can actually imply that we're moving down here, these are just the risks of realizing the rising wedge, okay? But before we need, a, before we need this, uh, I'm sorry, before we meet these targets, please know and see how much that 2 spot 618 golden mean is being respected right now, okay? So we are facing rejection from that area. The bulls don't want to let that go. But please remember that this is a standard setup and a standard play for short sellers, which they usually tend to open position up, uh, usually starting from around now and and maybe even at about 0858 okay so those are those are the potential risks uh, that we can face as longs okay so be very careful with what's happening guys i need to touch on the 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 fact that there are a lot of arca imposters in the comments please do not fall for any of those traps okay these guys or whoever they are they are asking for your bank information for your money for deposits and i don't know what that is not me i am not i actually will never share my contact information with you ever okay so just <laughs> just know that i'm not gonna ever say text me like no please no no one here will have my phone number okay you guys i don't i don't want you to lose any money do not do not talk to those scammers okay my name is arca and and i am the only one i am the only one other people will try to be um, uh try to mimic me and and use my credibility to uh to their advantage to try to get your money i am not gonna do that okay i'm not gonna ask you for your money that's not good that's not okay all right you guys so i need you to be careful with those people please please be careful okay uh, if you think you need to reach out to me, then definitely do it through a DM or through an email, okay? Because they do not have access to any of that. So use the Discord, use the Twitter, use the use the email located in the in the about section of my profile here in YouTube, and verify that it is me. But I can assure you that it will not be. I will never reach out to you first, okay? You guys, please be very careful with that. There are they are there are a lot of thieves out there and criminals. Okay, I do not want you to fall for any of those traps. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next chart. Okay, so this is a 
uh, th this is the uh, broadening ascending wedge that we've been riding for quite some time. And as you can see here, we're right at the threshold of the last iteration for that fractal, for the time fractal, okay? So this could be a good example of why sometimes fractal analysis doesn't uh, end up playing out. Uh, which is something I'm really not a fan of. I'm a fan of some fractals, but not not uh, too easy of fractals like this, okay? So, uh, yeah, the, you can see that we are clearly being invalidated. Uh, but to be fair, if we did count uh, the wave number, let's see, the wave number th four, if we did count it as its own smaller iteration, then in that case, uh, th the iteration would actually have to continue like this. And the wave would actually end up on January 30th instead of instead of today, which was uh, the 18th or the 17th that we were looking for. Okay, so that that is a, another small potential. But again, I'm not the biggest fan of fractal analysis. Okay, so be careful with that stuff too. We do have that 10 day simple moving average below us located at 0664 of which we can actually see if there's any type of Yeah, of course, the 0664. Um, let's see, it is located right. Let's look at the value right here. Okay, this is where the 0664 is located well within the support range that we're looking at and also the support of the of the rising wedge itself okay so you can see that everything is kind of linking and playing along with each other okay this is that uh 10 day simple moving average which could likely be used as support just like we have before we failed it we've actually come back down okay so just like this we're just riding the waves okay so and that 10 day simple moving average has been kind of working as a pretty good uh guide Okay, so just just know that there's a lot of confluent targets here as well. The 50-day uh, simple moving average being one of them at about four cents or almost five cents. We can validate that one as well. Okay, so that four cents or five cents is landing right here at the one spot six one eight at five cents. Okay, which is the other discretionary um, support level that I just gave you. Okay, you guys. So you see how everything is connecting. You see how the possibilities are there. Definitely know that there is always risk of of riding the wave okay we 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 faced one two three four bullish complete days of only green of course we're gonna face this okay there's a point to where where things correct and start moving on the natural uh the, the ebb and the, the natural ebb and flow of the market right so now let's go ahead and move on to the next chart and as you can see right here that this ridiculous cup and handle uh seems to be it, it seems that people are seeing it and the reason why I, I say that is because first of all we made sure that we can touch on our support of the not 618 at 0669 and you can see that i also made the bottom area or the bottom range of that support i actually made it a line up with the cup top okay and as you can see this candle from uh, this candle has literally reached all the way down to that perfect cup top and then and then bounce okay so you can see that the cup is being looked at but it doesn't mean that it's actually going uh to realize okay and as you can see here are those support levels that we've been talking about the between the five cent area and the four cent area okay very much in line with the other uh form with the other supports that we've been looking at okay now let's go ahead and move on to the last part of the analysis as it will be the rsi okay so uh the 30 day the 30 minute immediate short term time frame has already made a bearish cross okay so meaning that the rsi signal purple line has crossed the 14 day simple moving average pink line okay towards the downside and i get that the the pivot is not so significant and it doesn't look so uh so strong to the downside however we should mind that it has crossed it okay now the buy hourly has also made a fresh cross of that 14 day simple moving average and is now uh suggesting a continuation to the downside but to be very fair we are still within the gravitate within the gravitational zone which is uh, the very deep areas of the bull weakness percentile which means that we can likely be gravitated right back into the following zone but at that point the 14 day moving average would be there to you for us to use as a as a as a resistance so what this can entail is is that for the immediate short term we may find some con uh, some consolidation or some sideways trading 
Okay, so now the six hour time frame is suggesting some upside continuation, which is very good. Okay, but we can't give this too much credit because the pivot is very small. Okay, I know that the 14 day moving average is below us and we're still suggesting that upside, but we still have to express caution here. And uh, the daily is, is showing us some sideways trading, which is uh, in accordance or in correlation, sorry, with the buy hourly time frame. Let's see the buy daily. Uh, okay, if it decides to load any day today, there we go. So <laughs> buy daily is giving us some sideways trading action as well, more of that consolidation. Uh, and slightly bullish on the three day. We're still we're still below the moving average. Okay, so we we have a and we're well within the the grips of the bull strength percentile. So that's good. But we absolutely need to get above that moving average to continue to the upside. Okay, so still very bullish on the on the five day as we are sitting in the grips of the bull strength percentile it looks like a small pullback but a continuation to the upside nonetheless and the weekly is still on a bullish path okay so yeah what this is telling me is that we're likely going to see uh, a continuation uh, to to the downside follows followed by some sideways trading and then a recovery literally by the possible end of next week or the following week even um, but yeah we, we have relevant supports over here and it I am I'm not seeing any type of macro reversal I I'm seeing just a pullback and that pullback is likely to happen uh, starting in the next session if it's not already in play, of course. All right, you guys. So uh, uh, know that I'm not a financial advisor. Take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos. It's just a form of entertainment as I can't suggest. I cannot suggest for you to buy or sell any assets. OK, so take whatever I do show and iterate as just that entertainment. All right, you guys. So do your own DD and everything will be just just fine. All right. So with that said, I wish you well, a very good night, and I will catch you at the bell. Manana. Adios.